<laughs> he said, get down here and see. Ho, 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 and a bottle of rum, as you can see. A bottle, I have none. <laughs> Welcome back to Front Row Fanatics as we continue our review of CSW Show Fallout that took place on February 27th at the House of Hardcore in Mossy Head, Florida. Uh, just finished talking with JT Angel, the leader of Initial Shock, and uh, I'm going to pass it off to Mr. Internet and continue our review of the matches. Okay, up next we had Battling Bill Weaver come to the ring. You know, he's on a tour of the Gulf Coast here. The, battle, the Battling Badman Tour or something like that. <laughs> and he basically put a challenge out to anybody in the locker room that he cannot be pinned. And uh, I have some notes I made at the show. And El Paco Loco came out. And Bill Weaver took all of about three seconds and uh, doing away with him, had him tap out. But as Doug Pitt came out, he said the bell never rang. The match was never officially started, so... Therefore, it's null and void, and pure Doug Pitt decided to take on Badlin' Bill Weaver. And somewhere in the match, this turned into Bite Fest 2010. Doug Pitt continually bit the knee of Bill Weaver, uh, <laughs> the thigh, the uh, around the back, hamstring. Uh, Bill Weaver complained to the referee. He bit the referee, trying to show him where he bit him. Uh, next thing you know, uh, Doug Pitt and the referee were both biting Badlin' Bill Weaver. That, uh, that, that sounds kind of kinky. I hope everybody had their shots and everything like that because with all that, man, that ass biting and all that other stuff now, you know, uh, Rudy Tooty bite the booty and all that shit, you know, I mean, uh, woo -wee, right. somebody could be getting some, uh, what's that word I'm looking for, uh, hepatitis action or, or, or something, you know. Some type of bloodborne pathogen. Absolutely, you know, I mean, biting, I'm sorry, I'm totally disappointed that this match turned in uh, between two competitors such as Battling Bill Weaver and Doug Pitt, a gifted wrestler, turned into a bite fest. I mean, what the fuck is up with that? You know, I, I mean, no clue. Uh, they better be glad I weren't there because I'd have had to jump in the ring and start kicking both their asses and tell them I paid to see a wrestling match, not no two two people playing bitchy bite bite action all night long, man. You know what I'm saying? Well, the, uh, towards the end of the match, uh, referee Kyle W was rendered incapacitated. And, uh, what, did they bite him to death? I, I have no idea. He, he took a hit in the corner. And uh, Doug Pitt locked the uh, one-half Boston Crab on Bill Weaver, made him tap out. Uh, referee Dave Royson came out and uh, called the match. But there's a little-known, you know, you got to read the fine print, clause in Bill Weaver's contract that says he cannot lose a match by submission. So the match was immediately started back up. He rolled pure Doug Pitt over. One, two, three. Ah, the battling one is thinking. The cagey, grizzled veteran showed the young upstart <laughs> why. You got to read the fine print, boy. I mean, hey. With a jeweler's glass. That's right. Like that. Ooh. <laughs> Like, like you're looking for a diamond in a goat's ass or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Right, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, wait. What was that? Did I hear the mossy head goat fucker again? You know? I, mean, <laughs> I thought they had that guy in jail. What's up with that? He's escaped. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, up next, we, uh, we had a match involving T-Bird. And as you know, T-Bird was supposed to take on Mr. Violence, John Riker. Uh, uh, what's that skinny guy's name? Uh, California, uh, California, California kid. kid. <laughs> the Iron Fist of CSW. Uh, Fist. <laughs> him and uh, D <laughs> him and Doug the Chain Williams came out and said that they had beat the hell out of Mr. Violence John Riker in the parking lot, and so T Bird was unable to face John Riker, but they had a suitable substitute and a returning super nerd Lane Smart. All right. So Lane Smart always a treat to see T Bird, young like you say, young up and comer, uh, putting on good quality matches. Uh, uh, the end of the match saw Doug, uh, excuse me, Doug Pitt, Dougie the Chain Williams come out. He distracted the referee. California Kid slid in, super kicked T Bird, which allowed Super Nerd to get the one, two, three. Now, Super Nerd was also distracted. He did not know that the California Kid super kicked T Bird. And I don't think uh, 
you know, Lane Smart is the type of guy that would want to get a win that way. No, nah, he doesn't want no cheesy win like that. Win or lose, Super Nerd wants it right down the middle. If he's going right. to lose, he's going to take the loss like a man. If he's going to win, he wants to do it one, two, three, right there in the middle of the ring with no bullshit. Right. Now, no boom, boom bitches for uh, <laughs> Rustoleum Doug Chain there or whatever, you know. Has um, he ever gotten a boom, boom bitches? <laughs> no, never. No boom, boom bitches for you. That's why he went to the chain because he likes to yank stuff, you know. And uh, uh, it just, it's just killing. It. It's just killing me, you know. I, I noticed he had a, a, a new, uh, new outfit on too. What's up with that? It's an anti-sleeve outfit. There's and no sleeves at all. Huh? No <laughs> sleeves. Well, I tell you what, California kid and uh, and Dougie the chain. It, it, it probably they might have had 17 guys because I don't think the two of them weak dicks. Got what it takes to put out the symbol of violence, uh, just the two of them. You know what I'm saying? Well, be that as it may, Lane Smart was your winner. And uh, how are we doing on time? All right, we're going to roll right into our next match. And it was good to see Super Nerd returning from uh, his injury because he had a long layoff after being in some of the most vicious matches in CSW history. Four Corners of Hell. Four Corners of Hell and Wired and all kinds of crazy stuff. And Super Nerd is one tough son of a bitch. And Lane, it was good to see you back in the House of Hardcore. Absolutely. All right, as you mentioned earlier, Victor Crew has put a bounty on himself. A thousand dollars of his own money to whoever can make him bleed. And so the next match was the Sadist Kingdom. Mike Metal and Victor Crew with Busty Becky Kennedy. Taking on the team of Doug the Chain Williams and the King of Chiching Sugar Daddy, Shane Daniels. Hmm, interesting. Sugar Daddy and the Chain. Now, all I want to know is, who in CSW, where can I get some of that blood bounty action on there? <laughs> I can make Victor Cruz's ass bleed. You think so? I, I don't think I know so. You can make his ass bleed? Well, yeah. <laughs> By sticking my foot in it! <laughs> yeah, you thought you was going to get a funny one over on me there. <laughs> <laughs> I got to try. I hear you. Uh, the end of the match came when it saw uh, the... <laughs> I'm sorry. Woo woo! Mr. Internet's on a roll, baby. It's okay. We have a very raucous studio audience here tonight, so we'll, we'll get through it. <laughs> At the end of the match, saw the Sadies Kingdom put their finishing move, Social Stigmata, on uh, Doug the Chain Williams, which gave them the one, two, three. So Victor Crew, in fact, did not bleed. The bounty is still out there. Well, you know, as much as I can't stand the Sadies Kingdom, they are a formidable tag team. They got the victory. You know, and uh, continued their role of dominance in CSW. Hey, look at that, boy. Woo! Work that nipple. Anyway, with that being said, we're going to take a break. Oh, no, we're getting bosom splashes from all the women in the audience here. My God, all hell's breaking loose in this, at the front row fanatic I'm studio. Blushing. I'm He's blushing. turning red. Oh, my God. Producer, quick, I need a break. Cut the camera. <laughs>